Before I begin, I want to make sort of a statement, and that is any faith that see the people in the deplorable condition and they don't do anything about it, I want to have nothing to do with that faith. But that is not the case with Islam. Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says one ayah in the Quran, and because of the time I read it in English, it said, it's not righteousness that you turn your faces towards the east or the west, but it's righteousness to believe in Allah, the last day, the angels, the book, and the messengers, to spin of your substance out of love for him, for your kin, orphans, the needy, the wayfair, and to the end of this particular ayat, we come from Surah Tabakra, the second surah in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Quran, in the 177th ayat. I want to mention something, my organization, Muslim Social Services Agency, we every year team up with, for the last 12 years or so, we team up with Islamic Relief and we do what is called Day of Dignity. And we close off the street and we bring in different resources and services into the community that the community needs. One time we did this and we were giving away korbani meat. That's the sacrifice meat for, the, for Eid al-Ahad. And so I was going through the meat and the man walked by the line and he said, sir, is that meat for free? How much does it cost? Is it free or what? And I said, sir, this meat is for free. All you got to do is get in line and sign up. Let us know how many family members you have, and then we'll give it to you, enough for you to feed your family. He said, yeah, yeah. And from that time on, he did nothing but talk for about 10 to 12 minutes just telling people how much he needed the meat. He didn't know where he was going to buy the meat. He glad he came by. He kept going on and on. So you never know how much people need, how much they need what you have to offer. And so, alhamdulillah, we were there, we were able to give, uh, give him that meat. I want to go on with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa A man asked, he said, which act is the best in Islam? Which is the best superior act that you can do? And he said, to feed the needy or feed the poor and to say salam or give greetings to those you know and those you don't know. And so we see from this that Rasulullah sallam, he encourages us to feed the needy and give salams to everyone else that the speaker said before us. Also, you may say, yeah, Imam, I don't have anything to give. What should I do? Don't worry about it. There's an app for that. Rasulullah said, he said, every Muslim gives, has to give in charity. The people asked, oh, Allah's prophet, if someone has nothing to give, what will they do? Or what would he do? He said, he should work with his hands and benefit himself and also give in charity from what he earns. He replied, he should help the, and he again say, you know, if I can't find that, I don't have that. And he said, well, if you can't, can't even find that, he said, he should help the needy and appeal, the people that appeal for him for help. And he said, well, suppose I can't even do that. And then he mentioned to the man, he said, well, at least do, at least do good deeds and stay away from evil deeds. That would be a form of charity for you. And so we see for that, from this that even if you don't have anything, just be a good person. Do good deeds. Stay away from evil deeds, and this will be a form of charity for you. When the prophet's around the people, and a man or a person comes to him and say, yeah, Rasul, I'm poor. I have nothing to eat. I can't feed my family. So he would say to the Sahaba around him, he would say, who will intercede on this person's behalf so that you can get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So Rasulullah sallam, he immediately tried to get the brothers or the sisters to help this individual. Don't let the individual walk away, just uh, still hungry and still in need. We should be, right now we have brothers on one side, sisters on another side, but pretty much that's how it is in here right now. We should be in competition with each other to try to give as Abu Bakr did and Umar did. They were always in competition who can give the most, not to show off, but they were striving for Jannah. And so they wanted to do all that they can to get to Jannah. Even if they were in a competition like Olympics, we had to be in that competition, brothers and sisters, to try to give and to help other people. I'm gonna mention a couple more things. And that is, you can say I do or you can raise your hand. 
Who in here want to be where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is? You can raise your hand and say, I do. I see some hands. I see a lot of sisters here, and I see hands over from brothers. Good. I'm going to tell you how you, how you do that. I'm going to say it a long hadith, but I'm going to shorten it and try to paraphrase it, phrase it. And that is, on the day of resurrection, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he's going to say, he said, oh, son of Adam, I was sick, and you didn't come visit me. And then son of Adam would say, oh, Allah, you're the Lord of the world. What do you mean I didn't come visit you because you were sick? He said, so-and-so was sick, and had you went to visit him, you would have found me near him. Then Allah would say, oh, son of Adam, I needed something to eat. I was hungry, and you didn't feed me. Again, son of Adam say, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, what do you mean that you were hungry? I give you, didn't give you anything to eat. He said, so and so asked for something to eat, but you did not give it to him. Had you done so, you would have found me near him or with him. And then lastly, Allah says, yeah, oh son of Adam, I was thirsty. I needed something to drink, and you did not give it to me. And then son of Adam would say, Ya Allah, what do you mean you were thirsty? You're the Lord of the worlds. You asked for something to drink for me when you're the provider for, the, for everyone. He said, look, so-and-so was thirsty. They needed something to drink, and you did not give them anything. Had you done so, you would have found me with them. So for those who raise their hand or say, I do, visit the sick. Those who raise their hand and say, I do, if a person asks you for some food, give them the ta'am, give them the food. But those who raise their hand and said, or said, I do, then if a person say that they are thirsty, give them something to drink, my respected brother and sister in Islam. One event that we had, my organization had, we were, give, we were doing um, screening uh, for blood pressure. And the man got his blood pressure checked. And so the lady said to him, the, care, the healthcare provider said to him, sir, you need to go to the hospital right now because your blood pressure is off the chart. And so he took his food that we gave to him, all the things we gave to him, and he started heading towards going to uh, leave, leave, the, leave where, the, the, where we were to go to the hospital. Then one of his friends said to him, now I'm going to use the language, not cussing, the language that, the, that the, he said to his friend. His friend said to him, he said, yo, Puke, Puke, where you going, man? And then Puke answered. He said, man, I'm about to die. I'm going to the hospital, man. So we, alhamdulillah, just because we had this event, it went beyond his need. We thought that he was supplying a man with just for getting blood pressure checked. Well, it was more than that because the man's blood pressure was so high, his heart getting ready to bust, his vein getting ready to bust. Alhamdulillah, we know the ayah in the Quran where Allah said, if you kill a person, murder a person, it's like you're killing all of mankind. If you save a life of one a, a person, it's like you save the life of all, uh, it's saving the life of all, of all of mankind. And so we know this particular ayah from Quran. And alhamdulillah, perhaps inshallah, by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that this, this man's life was saved because of the event that we have to give to the people what they needed. Abu Bakr Sadiq. He would walk around in the wintertime, walk around town and see what people needed. If the poor needed something to eat, or they needed clothing, or they needed blanket, this is what Abu Bakr Sadiq, the first Khalifa of Islam, he would do. It's not like politicians we have right now where, where you, you only see him only, only when, you, when, you, when you want to have some photo ops. But not Abu Bakr Sadiq. He would walk around trying to find out who needed something, and he would provide it for them. Matter of fact, he, one time, uh, Umar, he went to this blind lady's house. He wanted to help her out, clean her house, prepare her food and the like. And so every time he went, it was already done. And so what happened after that, he said, well, who's been doing this? So one day he went a little bit early, because I need to find out who's doing this. And then he found out who was doing it. It was none other than Abu Bakr Sadiq. He was the one that was cleaning this woman's house up. He was the one preparing her meals for this, for this blind lady who could not do it for herself. Speaking of Umar, Umar also used to walk around town, walk around Medina, trying to find out who needed something. And this is about Amir Rukminin. He was the leader of the Muslims. He would walk around and find out who needed something. Matter of fact, when he found out someone needed something, he would go up to the Beit Mao and he would tell, you know, give me the rice or give me the, give me the wheat or the barley. 
and put it here on my shoulders so that I could take it to this person. One time, the person at the Beit Tomah said, yeah, yeah, Amir, you know, let me take it for you. He said to him, no, 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 no. You're not going to carry my bird on your Medin. You're not going to carry my, my bird right now in this, in this world. And so he carried for, for himself to the person who had, who had that need. One time, there was sort of a, a famine in the area, meaning nothing was growing during the time of Umar. And so the people from outskirts of town, they came into Medina. And so it was just crowded up. He did not tell the people, no, you don't live in Medina. You go back to your outskirts. Or he didn't build any kind of wall keeping them out. I'm sorry, I just had a political moment. He did not, he did not do that. But what he did, he said, come in. He got in touch with the, general, with the various governors in the, in the surrounding areas. And he told them, send me some of the food stuff that you have. And, and every day during the famine, that he fed 40,000 people until, alhamdulillah, until the famine was over. This is the quality of people we're talking about. We talk about Allah says feed the needy. Rasul Salam encouraged feed the needy. Abu, Abu Bakr Sadiq, he saw an example of feeding the needy and helping those in need. Umar did the same thing, helping those in need. And we have to do the same thing, my brothers and sisters in Islam, and guess. I want to give you one more story. We were, at my organization, we were giving out what you call non-perishable items. Canned goods, tuna, pasta, and, 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 and tomato sauce, and that kind of thing. And so after we gave it out, we had a little bit left. People stopped coming. And so a lady came by with a cart and a little girl. My girl might have been about four years old. And she said, um, how much does that food cost? We said, ma'am, the food is free. Because for us, before she came, we were wondering, what are we going to do with this pasta sauce? We had so much pasta sauce left. What are we going to do with this? And the lady came by. And so we said to her, lady, miss, the food is free. No problem. She said, oh, OK. Then she, she opened up her cart. There was nothing inside the cart. And so we full, filled her cart up with the food. Matter of fact, she said to us, she said, she said, like, I don't have my check. And what I've been doing, whenever I made spaghetti or I made some kind of noodle, I will, I will pour water in the ketchup bottle. And your ketchup is thick. She poured the water in there, shook it up, and then she poured the water and the, the, the mixture on top of her spaghetti, or on top of her pasta, and sort of made sauce. And after she said that story, there was, all the people was help, were helping us. We wasn't a dry eye in the place because they, because they, they, they understood her plight. And so we gave her all the pasta sauce, we gave her all of the canned goods that we have, and also we only had $20, and we gave her the $20 that we had, the last of inshallah, until a, until a check come. And so with that, my respected brothers and sisters in Islam, I love, and I might have to say this, I love what is called a theme of this year's, this year's conference, which is on the wall there, sharing Islam and serving humanity. What I want you to do, so I won't be alone at this, I want you sort of take a pledge with me and that we will from this conference time until next year this time, that we will agree to sh sh sharing Islam and serving humanity. So I'm going to need you to tell me, because you're going to witness me saying it, and I'm going to witness you saying this. And that is, what you're going to say is this, because I need more people, more soldiers helping is sharing Islam and serving humanity. And so I'm recruiting today soldiers, you all, to help me with this, inshallah. Not like you're not doing it. I'm not saying that at all. It's just that making sure that we're all on the same page and Allah is going to witness what we say. And so you're going to repeat after me, and it's going to be something very short. It's going to be, in the name of Allah, I'm going to share Islam and serve humanity. Let's do it again. In the name of Allah, I'm going to share Islam and serve humanity. I don't hear a whole lot of commitment there. Let's try it one more time. And this is going to be the last time, and then I'm exiting. Let's do it one more time. In the name of Allah, I'm going to share Islam and serve humanity. Thank you very much. I felt that one. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.